Many people talk about the postmodern or postmodernism, but do we really know what we're talking about? Welcome, this is the first video I am making in English. My name is Rodrigo Gim, I'm an anthropologist and social critic, and this is Critique with Nietzsche and Foucault. What do you understand when you hear the term postmodern? Do you think you can describe the postmodern? Please comment below so I can enter into a conversation with you. If you believe that thinking is fundamental in your life and you think you can debate thought, then please subscribe to this channel because that is our task here. Postmodernism is a hotly debated term these days and we are far from having a consensus as to what it means, whether it defines a way of thinking or defines the arts, technology, etc. Different authors have different ways of saying that postmodernism defines our present. However, many authors and activists today use postmodernism in a different fashion. They use it to describe the enemy, and it is as enemy because postmodernism would be wrong about the nature of truth. According to some authors and activists on both the left and the right of the political spectrum, the postmodernism is the enemy. So what is the postmodern? One way of thinking about the postmodern is that it comes after modernism. And how was the modern thought? What matters to us here, modernism, is a specific context of, of ways of thinking and understanding the world. There are many ways of understanding modernity by epoch, by socioeconomics, how new technologies change our identities, etc. But what I want to talk about today here is how modernity and with it postmodernity are understood as epistemes, as specific conjunctures that shape ways of thinking and understanding of who we are and the world in which we live. One of the names linked to what is called postmodernism is Jean-Francois Lyotard, who wrote a book called The Postmodern Condition, A Report on Knowledge. In this book, Lyotard says, citation, simplifying to the extreme, I define postmodernism as incredulity towards metanarratives. Metanarratives are stories that place universal truths, which uh, are stories that are not supposed to allow counterpoints, other points of view, which are thus final and definitive. Postmodernity is described as this disbelief in stories that stand as univocal and final. Thus, one of the interpretations that is made about what is postmodernity is this attitude of disbelief regarding whatever truth is put out. However, it can also be shown that this attitude towards truth is not something that can define postmodernity as being so different from modernity. Because disbelief with regards to final truths can already be read in many authors of modernity itself. In one of his last articles entitled What is Enlightenment? Foucault defined modernism as an attitude and as a permanent reactivation of an attitude, that is, of a philosophical ethos that could be described as a permanent critique of our historical era. The Enlightenment brought the critique of reason, the possibility of thinking that reason is not univocal, not closed in itself, that there is not only the choice of reason versus irrationalism. Enlightenment, modernity, brought the possibility of criticizing reason, of thinking of reason as multiple and contradictory, of being able to identify distinct rationalities. We can critique rationalities by using reason, 
rationalities can be critiqued, can be thought as rational forms, while this still doesn't make them equal to reason itself. For Foucault, as for Nietzsche, any attempt at a theory of reason itself is only a form of rationality. The idea of reason itself is only an ideal, a construction from a form of rationality. Michel Foucault shows us how, at least since Max Weber, there has been a critique of Western rationalization, of dominant rationalization. Weber was not in favor of irrationalism, just as the Frankfurt School scholars were not. They all criticized one kind of rationality. Foucault shows that to critique dominant forms of rationality is to critique those forms endowed with the status of the one and only reason in order to show that that's only one possible ways of reason among others. Foucault's works show that there are many rationalities. There is no one and only reason that can be recovered, that is pure, that is free from domination. There is no science of reason that can show a pure and truer reason, a reason that can only do the good. Nowadays, there are many denunciations of what would be a postmodern way of thinking. This is very common today on both the left and the right. But what, what is this postmodernism mode denounced by the left and the right? On the left, what is denounced is the abandonment of reason, the abandonment of truth, the notion that everything is relative and that there are no more absolute truths and no universal reason to guide human actions. Modernity, which in thought can be exemplified by the Enlightenment and its high value given to universal reason and truth as objective, this modern mode of understanding of the world and being has been questioned by many people. Nietzsche criticized the will to truth of modernity as an attempt to align every action in the world with primordial truths, as if reason could be sovereign of history, as if man, as a, as a modern paradigm and measure of all things, could be sovereign of itself, same of the world. In Nietzsche, we find the critique of the pursuit of the ideal of the herd, of the will for total equality among beings, a will to correct and equalize all differences that the world may present us. The dominant discourse on postmodernism today says that postmodernism is irrational, is, is the reign of irrationality, of the rejection of any and all truths that might be put forward. And this is a straight out uh, bad, wrong interpretation of many authors that are considered by the dominant discourse to be postmodern, like Michel Foucault, uh, Jacques Derrida, uh, Gilles Deleuze, and many others that in no way reject the possibilities of truth existing the, what they question is how they exist, how they are produced, how they circulate, and to what practices they refer, and most of all, what effects they have on practices. The dominant discourse on postmodernism goes wrong in many ways. First, it believes that there is a universal postmodernism. There is only one postmodernism, and, they, they and that they all say the same thing. They all think the same, they all think alike, and there are sound bites to be said about postmodernism. Uh, but if you bring thinkers like uh, Friedrich Nietzsche, Michel Foucault, Gilles Deleuze, Jacques Derrida, and so many others, uh, there is no way you can say they are saying the same things, referring to the same things, or that they have an outright rejection to truth. In the political right, in today's conservatism, 
This will for truth is for everything to remain as it is, without change. And for all who are not living the good life, uh, the good life would be the life of the West for the conservatives. What constitutes for them a good life is non-existent uh, for others. Uh, others just uh, want to degrade the West. Uh, let's look at an example from a well-known conservative. You need to understand postmodernism because that's what you're up against. And you're up against it far more than you know or think. The postmodernists completely reject the structure of Western civilization. The postmodernists completely reject the structure of Western civilization. So that's what you're up against. I would so that's what you're up against. I would say it's time for conservatives to stop apologizing for being conservatives. You know, and You don't apologize to these people. That's a big mistake. Apology, they read apology as, a, as, a, as an admission of guilt. You don't apologize and you don't back down. You young people that are out there who are university students, you need to take over the student unions. You need to take them back because they're absolute snake pits and they have been since the 1990s. First, I would like you to notice the resentment present in his speech, the will to annihilate enemies present in Peterson. This resentment comes from the idea that so-called postmoderns have spoiled the course of history, as if the West were one and doing very well in this one possible course of history. What the conservative discourse says it cannot, cannot accept is that there are struggles, but what it does is create its own enemy, so it's creating its own struggle. It's, own, it's already creating uh, the world as divided between conservatives and postmoderns. So what he critiques is exactly how his discourse is constructed. So conservatives say they cannot accept these struggles, but creates an idea that in the world there are only two sides, the conservatives and the postmoderns, and he criticizes the, the so-called postmoderns for seeing everything as, two, as a two-sided struggle but he can't see that he does that himself. On the right, it's very common to condemn in what they call postmodernism, the Western self-condemnation of itself. As if in the West, self-criticism did not live with self-affirmation. It's as if there is no room in the West for self-criticism, for self-critique. The conservatives reaffirm a univocal idea of the West as opposed to the East, or now even to postmodernism. Uh, they don't recognize that the idea of the West came about through colonialism of other continents. There was no idea of the West, and now these supposed enemies of the West, which in the past have also included Orientals, terrorists, communists, uh, which are all names created for enemies, the so now they include the so-called postmoderns. But the difference with the new enemy called postmodern is that there are sectors on the left of the political spectrum that also call their enemies postmodern and accuse them of it, of abandoning reason, of critiquing the notion of truth, etc. The idea that critiquing truth would be to abandon any appeal to truth is wrong. It's a wrong interpretation of Foucault's work for example, Michel Foucault never implied that truths do not exist, but that they are contingent, that they live, they circulate, they produce in relations with forms of domination, in relations with other productions, such as the production of subjects. Contrary to what many on the left say against Foucault, uh, he never failed to consider rationalities. What he did was to show that humanism, for example, is only one of the possible means of rationality. Truth is always challenged in practice, in truth games, and by power relations. Truth is always and perpetually challenged in practice, in truth games, in power relations, and by subjects. Nietzsche had already critiqued the primacy of knowledge over action. 
Nietzsche and Foucault cannot be labeled postmodernists because they do not posit that there are no truths. This is a gross simplification and misunderstanding of their works and other authors' works as well. On the contrary, they are interested in seeing how truth functions, how power relations link to truths, how subjects are subjected in relation to truths. Foucault was suspicious of any narrative that tries to unveil power as it lives, as if it were mirrored directly on forms of knowledge, since he disbelieved any translation as a one-to-one -one correspondence between knowledge and power, or power and subjectivity, truth and power, etc. In explaining knowledge and power as related, he never equated them. The slogan that knowledge is power, for example, has nothing to do with Michel Foucault. The description of how power or knowledge functions was an exercise that always failed, therefore his allusion to his work as fiction. Nevertheless, fictions also have effects in the world, and he certainly knew how to write them in order to provoke important effects. Foucault questioned the humanist assumption of the possibility of reason coming to rule over life. For Foucault, forms of domination are always present wherever a society exists. He states this clearly, citation, humanity does not progress from combat to combat until it arrives at universal reciprocity, where the rule of law finally replaces warfare. Humanity installs each of its violences in a system of, of rules and thus proceeds from domination to domination. Foucault critiqued the view that the state played an exclusive role in domination, but he said he did not want to minimize the importance and effectiveness of state power. So the oversimplification of his work happens when people say, for example, that he was only referring to the micro-political. He is just not invested in a meta-narrative about power. And for this reason, he has been called postmodern. Although he stated cl clearly that he saw no unity between his work and that of Deleuze, Derrida, and others that were also labeled as postmodern. Derrida critiques the metaphysical will to truth. He shows how this will to truth always fails, contradicts itself. For someone to affirm that the West is the best, uh, like Jordan Peterson does, for example, is to discard that the West is not closed in on itself. There is no essence that is only Western. What we call the West was formed through col colonialism of the world, was through a mingling of many, many different cultures. Um, there is no end of history and the West is not guided by universal reason. There's no reason to be scared of deconstructionism. It doesn't claim to end the West. There is no one West to begin with. The idea that there is only one postmodernism and that all so-called postmodernists speak the same tongue or the same thing is false is a nostalgic discourse of a past that never was. Michel Foucault says that the idea of a bifurcation of reason has a long history, and it, and it comes back again and again. There would be one side of reason going astray, and this is what those that don't understand critical thinking say Foucault, Deleuze, or David Dye and others are doing, as if they were deviating from the one and only universal reason possible, as if they were also saying the same things and using the same forms of rationality as well, as if there was just reason and unreason. Foucault wrote, citation, forms of rationality are created endlessly, so there is no sense at all to the proposition that reason is a long narrative and that is now finished and that another narrative is underway. So this is a very, very common story. It's a very old story that somehow we deviate from reason, we become irrational, 
But there's always the possibility of coming back to reason, the, only, the one and only universal reason possible. There is no one universal reason that we can all jump back into. And there is no one postmodern thought where all thought is the same. What humanist discourses are still trying to save is the primacy of conscience over history. It is human interiority as the origin of history. It is the refusal of time and of the difference within time. The dominant discourse on postmodernism is the refusal of time and of difference within time. It is the will to control time. It is the refusal to accept that time and conscience are not transparent to each other. And the refusal to accept that consciousness itself is multiple and contradictory because both the form and the effects of consciousness in the world cannot be fully controlled. What critics of postmodernism do when they equate Foucault, Nietzsche, Deleuze, Derrida with each other is to construct a fiction that is a kind of violence to the different specific relations, thoughts, and practices that these authors refer to. What these critics are doing basically is only providing a platform for resentment against the world today in an enemy, in a scapegoat for their own inability to comprehend why in the world today there's not so much more appeal to meta-narratives, particularly if they have been proven false, such as the idea that we have reached the end of history and that it resides in the West in the way it shows up today as democracy, capitalism, and science, Western science, etc. So basically what we have and what we are seeing both on the left and the right spectrum, uh, not that all leftists and all rightists agree, uh, they, they produce different discourses on postmodernism and why postmodernism is the enemy. But what both are doing is putting very different uh, practices, ways of thinking, critiques, yes, of the West, of the main ways the West has been thinking, but because these need to be critiqued, because these ways of thinking are linked to ways of practicing living in the world that produce injustice, that produce violence. Derrida said many times that deconstruction as a practice is a practice of justice. It's not just uh, a way of thinking. It's not to become a philosophical uh, base on which to critique the whole of philosophy. It's to open up space for difference that already exists in a way. Because when uh, people critique postmodernism, people critique uh, a critique that the West has produced of itself as to its effects in the world, which means that uh, some meta-narratives about the world, about the self, about ourselves, limit us. They, they, they show up as subjection to forces to relations that limit our possibilities of life, of a better life, of justice, of freedom, then we do need to critique these narratives that constrain our possibilities of life, of thought, that uh, come to, they come to try to encompass uh, ourselves in the only way to be a human being. And that is a problem. We need to question every time a certain discourse says, you see, that is the enemy, and that enemy thinks only in these ways. You're not allowed to think in these ways because then you'll become an enemy to society. And where this enemy is a fiction, uh, postmodernism in the dominant discourse Postmodernism as a discourse of the enemy that needs to be uh, sought out, to be 
annihilated, to be excluded, to be not present. Uh, postmodern, this discourse, this dominant discourse on postmodernism becomes a form of violence, injustice, and unfreedom. Well, people, now I need you to comment, ask on Facebook or YouTube so I can answer you in the next videos. This is an immersion in Nietzsche and Foucault. It's a video conversation whereby questions brought by you, I bring to the debate, and I also bring more questions. See you next Thursday.